Okay, welcome to the Turn Turn Guide. Today I'll be covering Tia, the Artist of Life. This will be the first of many mini guides and two characters. Hope you enjoy, and without further ado, let's get into the guide. Tia is one of the Turn Turn's battle mages. Many of her strengths rely on the ability to CC the enemy with high AoE damage abilities, as well as having very low cooldowns and being granted with a really good scaling based on levels. Some of Tia's weaknesses are the fact that she is so space and reliant, so if you don't have a good spacing fundamental, it could become pretty hard to pilot. On top of that, Tia has a very high cooldown dash that cannot jump walls and can be interrupted midway. So that becomes one of her biggest weaknesses on top of that. But she's pretty weak before level 9 as one of her biggest strengths, having low cooldowns, is not there before that level. Talk about levels, now we're going to jump into our max order and augments. For max order, we're going to be leveling W when we can. After that, we're going to be leveling R when we can. After that, we're going to be leveling Q, passive. And finally E. Looking at our augments, we have two main options that are very similar. The main difference between these is going to be the Tia versus Penny Pincher. Tia would be what I would recommend for people that want to contest more objectives and take more fights. It will give you that advantage during nighttime of the extra vision versus Penny Pincher. That one's a little bit for my people that want to kill some animals and scale and buy those transition items with the use of credits. Both of these use the main core augment of Empiric Bloodline for that extra skill and on the Siphon, which will keep you healthy throughout a fight, as well as give you that extra damage that you need. Um, moving on, we're going to be looking at our transitions and recommended stats. As any other mage, Tia really likes skill amp on most of her transitions, so that's going to be the main stat we're going to be looking for when looking at these. On top of that, unlike some of the other mages, Tia can make good use of Omni Siphon. On the bad hand though, unlike many of the other ones, Tia cannot use CDR effectively. Pretty much none of her abilities scale with CDR except for her ultimate, uh, which is already on a pretty fairly low cooldown. So there's not much point on building the stat, but some of the skill up items do have the stat, so if you get a little bit of it, don't worry too much about it, but you don't want to go for an item that is just CDR. Look at our matchups. Tia's best matchups are going to be those who cannot avoid her abilities, people with very low mobility, such as Bernice, uh, are very susceptible to just get full comboed and immediately killed the moment they enter your vision. On the bad matchups, on the other hand, are going to be people with ton of mobility or people who that can that can stick to you very easily. Both Shirichi and Sua have multiple dashes that can get point blank range from you, as well as CC immunity on the on, on Sua's case, which makes it really, really hard to fight them or almost impossible. Nikki, on the other hand, has really good ways of sticking to you, and on top of that, has a parry that can parry all of your color combinations, making it pretty much impossible for you to take her down. Uh, looking at your combos, pretty much we're going to be looking at one main combo that you can use when approaching fights. So when approaching a fight, Tia for the most part, you're going to be looking around the map, you're going to be tossing some yellows into those bushes that you don't want to get ganked on. So after you finally get an opponent, I would mostly recommend to start a fight with the blue. If you can, if you're within blue range, hit a blue, then follow up with a yellow into a root. That root, then you're going to ult right away. Do not wait, otherwise you're Ult will not connect as it has the wind up before it actually connects. Before your ultimate connects, you want to approach the enemy and hit them with the red. That way, the ultimate stun duration gets increased since it will be hit with pain. After that, it kind of depends. Depending on the HP that they have, the enemy might decide to run away or try to take you down before they go down. If they try to engage, I would recommend going forward with the yellow. Uh, that way, you get that red yellow combo into a silence. And if they try to run away, I would look for a blue for the extra movement speed. If the enemy does have a very long dash and you can't, by reaching them with blue, I would recommend dashing behind them. Now when you dash behind an enemy, for the most part, you want to be avoiding dashing with yellow. You want to ideally dash with red, and if not possible, then you want to dash with blue. But never try to never ever dash with the yellow, as it's your ability with the longest cooldown. And not only that, it's your one color that does not have a range requirement. Since after you dash behind an enemy, you're going to be expending one of your defensive tools as an offensive tool. And essentially, they can decide to turn around after you dash behind them, and they could very easily kill you if you don't have any way of hitting them. So having yellow available, that one ability that does not have a spacing requirement, will allow you to do something even if they decide to turn around and hit you. Moving on, we're going to be looking at our game plan. So Tia can pretty much be very flexible with her game plan. She can both do really good at objectives, she can contest those very well, and on top of that she can farm and scale very well. So you can do either or, or a mix of both. Ideally what I would recommend on game plan, even if you decide to be a person that likes to farm mostly and buy transition to the credits, I would try to at least get one meteorite off of contestants, uh, that way you can get your magic stick that will give you a lot of power. Before we finish off with this guide, we're going to be looking at some tips. So the first tip that I want to say will be about your W usage. 
The visibility allows you to swap colors uh, between one another, allowing you to pick which one you want to use. Tia, after she uses Q, she does have an automatic color swap that will swap you to the next color. But that automatic color swap is actually, you can override it by using W. So if you use Q and very swiftly use W right after, you're going to override a little bit of the delay before it swaps the color. And you should be doing this on the long run. But if it becomes too confusing for you or you're messing up because of it, don't pay too much attention to it and then learn how to do it later. But just know that it exists. Following up, we're going to be looking at the defensive tools. T is a character that has very straightforward defensive tools and only has three of them. The first one we discussed earlier on the form of a dash. If people get point blank range of you, you already lost because you can only hit yellow. You can't hit anything else. So you need to use one of your defensive tools. If you dash away, you will regain distance and you will be able to keep fighting. Another one of your defensive tools would be bat skill. You're going to be knocking back the enemy, uh, possibly into a wall. If there is a wall, be careful that it's not too close because otherwise you won't be gaining any distance. So just be aware of that. But the knockback can help you out a lot into a lot of matchups and it's one of your best defensive tools. And your last defensive tool will be your ultimate. While your ultimate does have a big delay before it actually lands, a lot of, whenever you use it as a defensive tool and you place it on top of you, people have to do something about it. And during that time, you are free to move around. And if they happen to get hit by the stun, or if they have to walk away to get out of the stun, you can gain a little bit of distance and can help you out survive some of those fights. If all your defensive tools are down, you might want to consider not taking a fight. Last tip, we talked a little bit about approaching fights with that one combo that I gave you guys. So now we're going to talk about skipping them. Whenever you want to skip a fight, let's say someone you turn around a corner, somebody full combos you, you're at half HP. You don't really want to fight them. What I would do is hit a yellow on them really quickly, point blank, and then swap to blue and then dash away while hitting them with the dash. That way they would be rooted in place and they won't be able to keep chasing you. Well, that was it for this guide. I hope you enjoyed. If you find anything useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.